I'm Kelly Carter, and this is another app. Routina, <laughs> welcome to the show. Nice to see you. You know, I want to refresh your memory because I've done a couple of pieces on you for Essence Magazine and for the Chicago Tribune. And one of those times was for the first film you did, How She Move? Yeah. Okay, okay. All right, so let's go all the way back there to that young woman. That was her first film and her first big role. What did she envision for herself in this career? Um, I can't really tell you her thoughts because I'm, I think, I think honestly at that time, you know, young Rutina had no idea that uh, the next thing she would do would be True Blood. Um, I was just happy to be in a dance film because um, dance is my first love. Mm -hmm. So I was just happy to be like rec recognized in that way. And, and you know, How She Moved was a big deal for me because it, you know, we got into Sundance dance films don't make it in the Sundance. Like that's not, that's just not what happens. So clearly like, you know, we were telling like a beautiful story that people were engaged in. But yeah, man, if you would have told me back then, like, hey, one, you're gonna do True Blood. And then two, in 10 years, you're gonna be the number one on Oprah's show. I would have been like, get out of here, whatever. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but you know, I just wouldn't have, I, I wouldn't have believed it. Does that make sense? Like, that's why I'm like, that young girl had, she had stars in her eyes, mm -hmm. but she didn't know if the stars could be realized. So what does that mean for how you decided to navigate your career? Because you moved into True Blood, which had you seen by a different audience, and then you moved into Queen Sugar. I think when I think about the work I want to do, I always think about, um, I just want to tell a good story. Um, and I, I, and I wanted to be challenged as an actor. Um, and I think, you know, True Blood was very, was challenging, but I also felt like they got to a point where they didn't know what to do with me. Um, and I think they just kind of like stuck me in, <laughs> stuck me into some things, you know, and I, I kind of joke about this, but I feel like, you know, I'm the only character ever in the world that dies twice on a show. Oh like, who, who, like, wait, wait, you gonna shoot me in the head, first of all, <laughs> in the head, and then I'm gonna get turned into the thing that my character hates the most, a vampire. <laughs> and then the finale, you're gonna kill me before the credits. Okay, so I was like, I was like, <laughs> True blood, I love you, but what are we doing? What are, what are we doing? Um, so I say that to say, you know, when I got Queen Sugar, it was like a dream come true for me. I mean, I finally could play a role that I felt um, close to. And as a dark skinned black woman, my only dream for a very long time was to do an August Wilson play. I just wanted to be, I remember saying, I want to be in a black play. Like, I want to I wanna be with my people. Um, and some people don't understand that, but you probably might understand that. It's just like, I felt like I went to a school where I was the only black girl in the department. You know, it was predominantly white school. I learned a lot, it was great, but I just didn't feel like I fit in. So when Ava approached me with this role, I was like, it's a black show? Like, what? You want me? I get to play? I get to play like a part of me and like share it with the world. I mean, I wept. I wept when I saw that first episode. I wept yeah. because I was, I had never seen myself in a light where I, I, I took my breath away. I gasped because I was like, I've never seen myself so beautiful. And, 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 and not that I didn't think I was pretty, mm -hmm. but the way in which they captured my essence, mm -hmm. the essence of me and, mm -hmm. and, and my color, you know, cause when I thought about true blood, I was like, there's a lot of scenes where I was, I was dark cause you couldn't see me <laughs> because they didn't light for me, <laughs> but on Queen Sugar, you know, they, they lit the, the space for us and for our melanin to jump off the screen. So it's my, you know, Nova is probably my greatest role to date. Um, I've, I've never played a woman quite like her. I've never been pulled in so many directions. Um, 
you know, and also just me being with my sexuality and being fluid. Like I never got to play that. And, and, and so I got to put some of myself into, into Nova. It was, it was awesome. I mean, I, 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 um, you know, I didn't know that, you know, Queen Sugar would go on for seven years, you know, but I knew that what we were doing at the time was special. And I knew that there weren't any other shows or characters for that matter like the ones that you see in, in Queen Sugar. And, you know, people like to see themselves reflected back. And and so I, I've taken great pride <laughs> in meeting people who are like, I'm the real Nova. Let me tell you something about Nova. I know Nova. Like, and then I'm just like looking at these people like, wow. Like, cause you just, you don't know who you touch until you do, you know? And so it's been, um, it's been a beautiful journey. It's been a, it's been a beautiful journey. And I want to stay there because as a reporter, as a critic, as a human, really, How She Moved did something to me. Just seeing a version of myself in film, I don't feel like I get to see a lot of beautiful, dark-skinned women being lead characters. I would love to hear you talk a little bit about that because I'm sure I'm not the only person who has ever said to you, I feel seen because of some of the work that you did. Of course. I mean, I think the best reward I've ever gotten is from viewers and fans and their feedback. Um, people telling me that they see themselves in me is a reward enough. I've always in my work, I've wanted to you know, move people with my work if I can. And so even if it's just one somebody, I feel like I've done my job. And I feel like I definitely did my job with Queen Sugar because it was multiple of people who've come up to me that's, that has said, you have changed my life. You have made me see myself in ways that I didn't know I could see um, and just thanking me for the work. And I know as actors, like we get praised and things and, uh, you know, awards, that stuff doesn't really matter. Like to me, what matters is the people, like who are you touching? Who are you moving? Um, how are people responding to you? Um, and I, like I said, I didn't know those things were happening until I did, until people started to come up to me. And it, it's, 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 you know, for me, it's seeing Viola and Angela, seeing them, and I realize that, oh, I can see myself in them, that that means maybe I can do, I can do this. And a very dear friend of mine, um, Nelson Ellis, who I'm sure you know from True Blood, mm -hmm. um, but he had said to me once, he was like, man, he was like, you know how much Viola, like, what she thinks about you? Like, you, you, you are the girl, it's like, she didn't get to be the Juliet. Mm. Viola has played a lot of character roles. That doesn't mean she can't be Juliet, but she didn't get cast as that. And he was saying, Viola was looking at me like, now we have a young chocolate girl who's getting to be Juliet, who is like, look at her go. And I was like, she said, what? Like, I was like, <laughs> I was like. Oh my God, yes. Were you drowning in a puddle of your own tears? I drowned in my own tears. I still look up to the two of them. They are still my people that I would aspire to be. I mean, man, if I could be doing what Viola's doing now um, at her age and how she's kind of coming to the game kind of late, mm -hmm. like, I don't care. Like, I'll take it. I don't care when it comes, you know what I mean? I don't care if it comes when I'm 65. Like, I, I'm gonna be like Cicely Tyson, like 95 still acting. Like, I, I just wanna like, you know, do it. So, you know, having those role models meant a lot to me. And I think now I've become a role model yeah. and I didn't really realize it until, like I said, I get, get young women who are coming up to me being like, you, you look like my mama or you remind me of my auntie and I just like I see the beauty in you you know those kind of things change you as a person because like I said you really you know you don't know you've moved somebody until they reflect that back to you and, and tell you their story and share their story with you so um I'm, I'm grateful for that for this opportunity and I, I'm also grateful that I, that Queen Sugar was my first like I'm grateful that Queen Sugar was my August Wilson that I got, and then I got to do it on a large scale so that everybody can see what I had because I didn't leave nothing on the table. You hear me? Nothing on the table. Not one thing. Listen, not one thing. I'm still shaking over here in my chair at she gets to be Juliet. 
What a beautiful sentence rooted in some sadness because it's problematic that this hadn't happened before. But what a beautiful sentiment though. Yeah, you know, Nova, she's layered and she represents so many things, including a journalist. That's why I was really excited when I got that first pilot. I remember way back when, and she's an author, community activist, LGBTQ plus issues, interracial dating, so much more. What part of Rutina lives in Nova and what have you been able to give to that character? Um, I think the way that I love and, and me being so being fluid and uh, I'm, I'm a lover of, um, I'm all about energy. So like, I can love your energy before I love you. Like I can be like, ooh, this energy, I feel it. Like I can, I feel people before I see people. Um, and I've always, always been like that. And so I just tried to give Nova some of the ease that I have with my sexuality. Um, so she wasn't rigid about it, um, unless Nova was around certain people like her father mm. or like, you know, I mean, with uh, season six, we had that stuff with Nova and Billy. And so you came to understand why Nova was the way she was. She never really got to be herself because she didn't feel safe. Um, but when Nova's out in the world, that's her safe space. Like she saunters around, she doesn't mind holding people's hands. Like she will do that stuff out there in the world and, and sort of be able to, to just love on whoever she loves on. And, and it was a lot of pressure for me because, you know, being a dark skinned actress and also just playing this woman who's in love with this cop who's white like people a lot of sisters was like hey what you what you doing like you need to you need to let that go. <laughs> you need to let that go and some of the sisters i was like i can look you in your face and tell you the same thing that you what you got you need to let go but you're not gonna listen but you're not gonna listen to me <laughs> you know but i loved that because it made nova so complicated and like and human because of course a predominant activist, community, woman of the community, gardener, herbalist is going to be in love with the white cop. Of course. Of course. And it should make you kind of go, well, man, love can conquer anything. Like, you know what I mean? Because clearly Nova and Calvin love each other in a way that people still to this day don't understand. Like, that's a man. Calvin's the kind of man that I felt like when he walks into the room, like he gets all in your head, like he all in here. And you just like, you mesmerize because he's in your head. It's not even physical yet. He's mm -hmm. in your brain. Mm -hmm. And I feel like Calvin saw Nova in a way that no one has ever seen her. Um, and I think he does love her truly. And also just to put this into some context that they do have a long history, you know, in the sense that they were also probably together before he was married. You know what I'm saying? So it goes way back and some people don't know that part of it. So they still, they don't, they don't get it. Um, but I, I, I've loved, I've loved fighting for that relationship. And I remember in the very, very beginning too, when things were going south, I was like, no, don't take my Calvin. I was like, I love him. And like, you know, but some people have to like leave each other, then they come back, then they leave again, you know? So it's just like, you never know what you're gonna get with, with the two of them. But I do can tell you that the love that is there is real. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's that kind of love that's not necessarily blinding, but I think it could be the kind of love that like will stand the test of time. Mm. I think it's a love that if everything were right, that it could possibly could possibly work, you know. But you know, Dominic then came now, so I don't know. Dominic is in the picture, so <laughs> you know what I mean. Nova's kind of like, well, <laughs> like love, yes. Like I feel like. <laughs> I feel like Nova is loving it. You know what I mean? So I mean, we're going to, we're going to see what happens with, with, with all of that. But I think what will be important is to like, is seeing Nova and the growth that she's going to have in this final season and also seeing where her and Dominic are going to go. And, and if Nova's going to stay in the room, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I hope I answered your question. And then some, that was a beautiful answer. What parts of Nova do you think will stay with you? All her parts. Um, I think the the power of her voice and her use of her voice, um, 
will stick with me. I think as an artist, I, I'm realizing I have a platform. I mean, how many followers I have, I have enough that people are listening to what I say. Mm -hmm. So I've gotten really, um, been really careful about how I choose to post things or what I post um, because I know people are looking. Um, and I want to set like a good example. Um, like I would love to, to, I want to be Nova in that way of like, how would Nova do it? Mm -hmm. Like Nova not going to post a, a, a picture of Charlie talking about some, you know what I mean? Nova's not going to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just, I, I, that's my, she's my barometer and I'm kind of being, I'm always like, what would Nova do? So I'm like, okay, well, I'm not going to do that. And then I have so much fear from playing Nova too, that like, it makes me do stuff that I don't, that I'm uncomfortable with. Like actually Bettina, no, you need to post about that. Like people wanna hear from you. And even though it makes me uncomfortable and I don't wanna deal with people's comments, I do it anyway, because I'm like, Nova would do it. Mm -hmm. Nova would use her voice right mm -hmm. now. Like if you have something to say, you know, whether it's positive or anything, um, you should use your platform to say it, but know that while you're using your platform that whatever you do do, there could be consequences based on what you choose to say, you know, but that that's okay. Cause we've got to have tension for things to change. So we got to have, you know, so she's just made me like walk in my fear. Does that make sense? Like, it's kind of like, I'm scared. And I'm, but I'm going in the room, but I'm like shaking. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like I tell people like I'm a big heart with like shaky legs. <laughs> it's like <laughs> you just see this big old like love, and then my legs are like you know because I'm scared. So she's made me kind of come out of myself in a way that um, I never would have thought. Um, I didn't think I was my power. I didn't think I was that powerful. Really? I, I, like just when I was talking about like platforms and stuff, I didn't think I had that. And now I'm realizing I actually kind of do in a way of where people do, they they listen to what I have to say and, and, and my view on things. So I just try to be careful, right? Like I said, I check my facts, try to do my research mm -hmm. um, before I post or anything like that, because that's what Nova would do. Like she did her research as a journalist. Now, I don't know about that book because she didn't talk to her family about it and she got some of the stuff wrong, but... <laughs> But her intentions were good, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. She really was trying to help somebody. Um, and I think, and the last thing I'll say is playing Nova has made me want to share my story more. Mm -hmm. um, whether it's how I started out or telling people about my childhood, whatever it is, um, it's, it's, she, she's made me want to share and, and, and get comfortable with, with sharing, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. It does. I was going to say, it sounds like she taught you how to be vulnerable. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. In front yeah. of, you know, having a private moment in public mm -hmm. sometimes. Yeah. Along those lines, last season, you recently have played out some real life situations in the series. You've tackled COVID-19, social justice, challenging racial climate. How did that influence how you approach Nova's arc and that rawness and that innate ability to stand up in the really hard times? Yeah, I guess I'm thankful that I had this work to do. I'm thankful that I had those scripts. Um, for example, the, the George Floyd uh, episode for me was um, so difficult and, and uncomfortable in the best way because I, I hadn't said those names out loud. I didn't even know how many names there were. I just knew there were, but to actually say them, to go down the list and to say them all mm -hmm. was, I remember that first take, like I lost it at the very, very, very end. Um, I just, and that was all natural and all me because I was physically <laughs> saying things for the first time and, and putting people's names in my mouth and then trying to give honor to those people who have passed on. And it was just like, I, I can't even ex ex explain the feeling I had other than I was just like, I remember being, I think there was a part of me that was like, man, I don't want to get this wrong. Like, this is huge. Like, how do I, and then I was like, like, how do I do this? Right. And then I just said to myself, just say the names. Just say the names. And everything else will come 
into play. And that's exactly what happened. I just started saying the names and um, I didn't have to act. I didn't have, I just, you know, um, and it was so poignant because it was so timely. Like it was happening in real time. Like we're giving you an episode where like, this is happening right now in the world. And it made people like wake up in a way to be like, oh wait, what? Oh yeah, yeah. You remember what's going on in the world or you just like lost in your TV? Mm-hmm. We're not gonna let you be lost in our show. Mm-hmm. We're gonna talk about some things, <laughs> you know, we're gonna talk about the real world. Um, and people needed that. I think they needed, um, you know, like an outlet. Mm. They needed a place to grieve. They needed a place to mourn. Just they like the people like needed and I felt like they could watch our show and that episode and get some sense of like relief and healing Mm. from it, you know? Um, But it was very, it was difficult. I remember being, I was really nervous because like I said, I I I didn't want to get it wrong. You know, I was like, I, I, I want, I want to do this in a way that is honoring these people and I want people to 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 feel something. I don't want to feel like an actor in this moment. Does that make sense? Oh, it absolutely makes sense because there's another name that you, Rutina, have been saying, Brittany Griner. Let's talk about that because that obviously is very important for you to utilize your social media platform to talk about her release. What compelled you to take to your social media to talk about it and to advocate? Yeah, that, um, you know, when I'm, like, I'm an empath, but, like, when I'm moved by something, um, I'm moved. And, like, I've watched Britney play. She's been nothing but, like, the most amazing player. The team, her teammates love her. And honestly, when I started seeing it on people's pages that I respected, like, that people were starting to really speak up, Mm -hmm. I was like, well, I'm going to speak up too. And again, this was a perfect example of when I was like, let me do my research. Let me make sure I know what's, what's, what's going on. But I just felt like I needed to add to that voice. And like, like I said, not, I don't have millions of people following me. I don't, but I have enough that maybe if you didn't know, now, you know, about this young, this woman who was like wrongfully detained, or, you know, it's kind of like, she's kind of like stuck between a rock and a hard place. Right. Because of what's going on over there. So um, I do know at first I didn't want to post because I was like, maybe they're trying to keep this sort of on under wraps, right? And keep it more like private so that she doesn't get used as a pawn, a political pawn like everything that, that everybody thought. But then I was like, no, I was like, our voices have to be loud because they have to know how much we care about her and how we want her um, to be home. You know, and like, I don't know Britney personally, but like I said, I've watched her, I love the WNBA and I've watched her play and I just felt felt that, you know, what can I do in this moment? And in this moment, I can post about what's going on with her. I can post a picture about how many days she's been in there, just giving, giving people information and they can take the information what they want with it and do what they want with it, mm-hmm. right? Um, and, it's funny that you said that because I'm like, you've been checking my page, but um, <laughs> I don't usually, um, you know, I don't, I don't usually post a lot of stuff that's like that or that has a potential to be, you know what I'm saying? And honestly, I thought about myself and like, what if that happened to me? But like, what, so I would want people to rally behind me and make me feel like I'm being seen even though I'm behind bars. Like yeah. she needed the world, you know, the world needed to see her. And so I'm happy, you know, I'm not happy with the outcome. I don't, still don't know what's gonna happen, but I am happy that a lot of people spoke up for her and I feel like it. we, we were able to shine a light on her that wouldn't have otherwise worked if none of us had said something, collectively said okay. something. And there's power in numbers, mm-hmm. you know? So when I, when I saw that, I was like, I'm gonna get on that. I'm gonna get on, on that train because I'm one more person that she has in support of her, um, you know. And I do hope it like I, I hope they can figure out what's gonna what's gonna go on there because I just my heart breaks for her because mm-hmm. she's not at home. She's not at home, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. Um, and we don't know what's going on over there. So um, yeah, it just meant, I just felt like I needed to at that time and that was something that I knew enough about that I could get behind. No, I love that. I love that. 
Thank you for sharing. Before I let you go, what's next for you? You're saying goodbye to Nova and the world is opening back up for you to maybe dive into another character. What's next for you? What are you looking for? Um, I am looking for more good work. I want to tell amazing stories that are poignant to the world and not have meaning for people. Um, I don't know what's next. Um, I probably need a vacation. Um, I haven't had one since 2016, so I probably need a vacation. Um, I don't know, like I'm still like processing the end of Queen Sugar. I'm still in like a little bit of a shock mm. uh, of like, really? It's over? Um, you know, and if I had my dream, I, I, I want to do a romantic comedy. Like I'm hilarious, and, then, you know, and I mean that in a way of like, I'm a silly kind of funny that you haven't seen. Maybe if you go back and watch a little bit of True Blood, you'll see some of those little silly characteristics. But I want to do, you know, I want to be the girl and in, in the film, like I want to be laughing, running in the walls, doing crazy things. Um, that's what I want to do, romantic comedy or, and then after that, I want to do an action movie. Cause I feel like I have the facility <laughs> to do it. I got the, you know what I mean? Got the muscles. Sometimes I got the muscles I'm getting a little old, but um, I would love to do an action film because I just feel like I, I, that that's my world. You know what I mean? Because I'm such a physical actress because I am a dancer um, that I think that would be, you know, like awesome and you know, my Juliet days are probably over. I'm probably a little too old to play her now, you know, but I want to do another Shakespeare play. Like I'd love to do some Antony Cleopatra. I'd love to do some Cymbeline. Um, I, I, there's just like, I got to do a play. And I think, you know, there's maybe a play in the works for me. I can't talk too much about it. But, <laughs> but I may be heading back to Broadway, um, which would be awesome. And yeah, that's that's it. And then I'm just gonna kind of go where the sales take me, you know. Um, but I'm 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 grateful that I have the opportunity um, to choose the work that I do. Um, I'm grateful that I'm not ending Queen Sugar and having to run right to another job. I'm grateful for the time mm. to choose, mm. um, the time to decide what it is that I want to do next. Um, I'm grateful for that time because I remember as a young actress, you didn't get that time. You just have to be on the grind all the time. You have to go, 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 go. And as I've gotten older, I'm like, what we're not gonna do is we're not gonna go, 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 go. We're not gonna kill ourselves. <laughs> we're gonna try to be healthy mentally, mm -hmm. but we are gonna do things that we love and things that trigger my heartstrings. Um, so for instance, if I get an independent film that's for $2, but I'm crying by the end of the script or I'm loving it, I'm doing it. Yeah. It's not about the money. I need to be fulfilled as an artist. And yes, sometimes, yes, you got to do some other things so that you can do some other things. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm never, you know, I just, I don't want that for me if I can choose. I want to be able to, 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 to choose my work, you know, and, um, and I'm hoping that I, I get that opportunity. Routina, every time we talk, all these gems are dropped and it's all this goodness. Thank you so much for doing this. No, I had a lovely time talking to you again. Yeah. Thank you so much. No, thank you so much and continued success. And definitely take that vacation, girl. Okay, I know, I need to. <laughs> <laughs>